Hi there, I'm Kate and I work as a project officer with Wigmix. Have a think about how focused and interested you are in what I'm saying right now. You might be feeling easily distracted, less interested or not very connected. Do you think you'll remember much of what I have to say? Sound alone just isn't as effective as communicating visually. Add in the sense of sight and you're now able to pick up on body language, visual cues and get a better sense of engagement in our conversation. This year, the COVID-19 pandemic has restricted our ability to safely interact face to face, but luckily telehealth has come to the rescue, allowing the delivery of vital healthcare to continue. The use of phone calls seems to be the preferred option over video calls. Back in March, Wikmix conducted a clinician survey and it was clearly voiced that the unfamiliarity of video calls was a barrier to its use. It's understandable. Video call is a new thing, could be a bit intimidating and seem like more effort and more complicated than a phone call. But a video offers so much more. Being able to read body language and engage visually is so important to effectively communicate both on the giving and the receiving end. Our survey also recognised clinicians were feeling unclear about which of their patients would be suitable for telehealth consultations. In response to this, we put together some resources to help build clinicians' confidence in using telehealth, which the Department of Health and Human Services has asked to adapt and promote on the government telehealth website. Using advice from the European Society of Medical Oncology and feedback from healthcare professionals, we developed a criteria to assist clinicians in choosing the most appropriate form of consultation for their cancer patients during the COVID-19 restrictions. It highlights the importance of protecting patients against unnecessary exposure, especially those most vulnerable, without compromising their care. Secondly, we put together a run sheet with tips and reminders for conducting a video consultation from start to finish to help ensure both the clinician and the patient can take away a consistent and positive experience. Thirdly, we developed a telehealth fact sheet for consumers. We wanted to promote the use of video consultations by giving people some insight into the benefits and offering reassurance for how easy it can be. There was already many different resources around, some very technical, some not at all. We wanted to combine everything to cover an explanation of why telehealth is being used, instructions for before and during the appointment, as well as answers to commonly asked questions. Our consumer group kindly gave valuable feedback to shape this resource and while consulting with our health services, it came to our attention that there wasn't a lot available in languages other than English. We have now had the pamphlet translated into Arabic, Italian, Greek, Chinese and Vietnamese to cover three quarters of the patient population who receive care by Wigmix partnered health services. These resources are available for download on our website and have been promoted by the Telehealth Victoria Community of Practice. The clinician survey I spoke about before also recognised that hardware and connectivity was limiting compliance with video telehealth. To further investigate, we ran a capability audit across eight partnered health services, which showed a wide variety of results. Some had telehealth set up prior to COVID, while others have acted very quickly in setting up the service as it was either non-existent or not widely used. To target this, the focus of our annual funding program has been narrowed specifically to telehealth improvement projects. Seven partnered health services applied for funding, totaling almost $400,000, to act quickly in improving their telehealth service for cancer patients by January next year with plans for long-term sustainability. We found that numerous health services were restricted by thin client computers, which are not capable of facilitating video calls. Instead, they were relying on laptops, which were being shared around and a bit of a difficult process. These are now being replaced with telehealth enabled workstations, mostly dual screen, so that clinicians can easily access patient information and results while on a video call. Funding for the recruitment of short-term project officers has also been provided to organise workflow processes, train staff and ensure the rollout of a successful telehealth program to be embedded into the future for these health services. Additional to this, we are also seeing some innovative pilot projects utilising virtual health for ward rounds, hospital in the home and community palliative care. 
These projects will replace face-to-face -face consultations with video, saving travel time for both the patients and staff, while continuing to provide high quality healthcare. If one good thing can come out of this year, let it be that we modernise healthcare to everyone's advantage. Let's make it more convenient and accessible than ever. WICMIX welcomes any suggestions from both healthcare professionals and consumers for improving the usability of video telehealth, so please feel free to get in contact.